Hello knitters, Barbara Benson here. I am an independent knitwear designer who also likes to make videos here on my YouTube channel Watch Barbara Knit. If you would like to know more about my knitwear designs, please check in the description below and there you will find a link to my Ravelry page where you will see images of all the different things I've designed and you can browse through and if you'd like to purchase a PDF you can get one. If you decide you want to knit one of my patterns I would love to hear about it and maybe see some pictures. Please feel free to chat with me in the comments below and if you do want to share pictures in the description below you'll find a link to the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group. I welcome you to come over and join. It's a closed group so it's a little bit private and we can share pictures and talk and ask questions and on just recently in this past week on the Watch Barbara Knits Facebook group I asked what should be the subject of this let's talk and I went through Facebook and it wouldn't show me the post you know how it, the new algorithm sorts it kind of funny and you can't always figure out what in the world is going on and I couldn't actually find the post but someone had suggested that I talk about storing your yarn or yarn storage and I thought that was a really cool idea so today we're having a let's talk what let's talk is is me talking about something about knitting pretty much picking one subject and riffing on it I'll put a link to the playlist that this is in. I've talked about needles and stitch markers and all kinds of things. If you have any suggestions so, so, for something you'd like to hear me talk about, I'd be happy to hear them in the comments below. And today we are going to talk about storing your yarn. Now, first thing we might need to talk about is the concept of a stash. Apparently a stash mystifies some people, but anyone who's been knitting for any length of time probably has at least a small stash and what I mean by a stash is yarn that you have purchased that may or may not have an actual end uh, use planned for it. Sometimes you buy a skein of yarn or skeins of yarn simply because it speaks to you. You don't necessarily have a pattern in mind, you just know that you love this yarn and you have to make something out of it at some point in time. I personally consider yarn to be very much like wine. It is something to be purchased, but then it has to be properly aged before you can actually use it. You, you go and like people who collect and stash wine, they put it, they have to keep it and you have to keep it safely. And you know, just like wine, you have to go in and turn it every once in a while. Well, you have to go into your stash and pet your yarn every once in a while just to make sure that everything's fine with it and check out what you have. But yarn has to be properly aged before I can actually knit with it. So I do have a bit of a stash. There are a few things I wanna talk about about storing this stash of yarn. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is, um, is how to store your yarn as far as how it needs to be. So you work with yarn in one of two ways. So when you purchase a lot of yarn, it comes in a skein. So you can't knit directly from this uh, because it would make a giant mess. You have to wind it up into a ball to work with. Or here's also wound up into a ball. This is in Zula Burley. It's beautiful, soft, bulky yarn. And this I hand wound into a ball. And then this is a, I used a ball winder to wind it into a center pull skein, but I never do center pull. So you have these different types of ways and they have to be in either a ball or a cake to be able to actually knit from them. Some yarns actually come in like this one, come in a already ready to use form. So it's already balled up like this and you can work directly from it. So these are fine. You can store them exactly as is. But I need to talk about, do you store like this or you do you store like this? And the answer is 
store like this. I know that when you're at a yarn store and they actually have a ball winder and they can wind it up like this, it's very tempting. And if you know what you're going to do with that and you know that you're going to actually knit with that yarn within the next, oh, you know, six months, I think that's a good range. You can go ahead and have it wound up. But if you know you're just buying it and you might not be able to get to it fairly quickly, you want to store it in your skein or hank shape. And that's because this has been wound gently by and, and wound up by the dyer and it can be stored like this with no negative repercussion. But when you ball something up, either by hand or with a winder, you're actually putting the yarn under tension. And if you store like this for an extended period of time, you can run the risk of stretching or damaging the elasticity, elasticity of your yarn. So if you're going to store your yarn for, you know, in the range of properly aged six months to a year, if it's going to be a while before you get to it, make sure you just put it away like this. Okay. You don't want to put it away like this or like this in a ball, unless you're able to wind it super duper loose. But I find when I try to wind something super duper loose, it ends up just going Bleh. and then it, then that's not helpful at all. And you just have to get it detangled. So if you, again, if your yarn comes in a ready to use type of wound situation, you can store it like that. But if it comes like this, you need to store it like this until you're close to ready to using it. Now you will see this. Um, I use many different things to store my yarn. I have a problem at the container store. They don't know who I am. I'm not getting kickback from them, but I love the container store and I buy all kinds of stuff at the container store. This is the clear shoe box from the container store. And I actually have purchased this in a case. I think it has like 12 or 18. It's got a bunch of these. And because apparently people have a lot of shoes, I don't know about lots of shoes, but I have lots of yarn and I like having them and I put things in these types. You can see them behind me where I store them and then I can see inside and see what's going on and remember what's there. I really need to organize that better because some of the things I stored away and then it I forget about it or whatever, but I like those types of tubs now these types of tubs, they just, they're not airtight, but they are protective and they are, as I said, clear. Now, for more long-term storage, again, from the container store, <laughs> I have these mumbo jumbos. This is the kind that actually have these locking I'm going to have to do this full frame. Normally I, I, I close it in. But if you see here, they have this little gaskety thing right here. And these are actually watertight. These are, they seal. And what, when they're watertight, they're weatherproof, but that also means they're bug proof. Look at this. I've got some beautiful, ooh, look at the beautiful, um, and for a lot of my yarn, I have stacks of these tubs that are full of yarn. This one's not terribly full. I have bigger ones. And what's great about them is they're, they can stack. And again, they're clear. You can see through the side. I also have some uh, flatter ones that aren't quite as tall that are what I actually store finished pieces in um, that just laid flat. Now, some people, and they might like to, at this point in these types of storage bins, put cedar or lavender or some sort of nice smelling thing. I personally have scent issues, so I don't do that, but that is one way to do it. But one thing I do not do is store yarn just open on a shelf. Um, they get dusty. 
yarn gets dusty and I don't need anything else to dust. If you have cabinets that have doors on them, that might be useful. But the thing you have to be very aware of, and I don't like talking about it, but we have to, is pests. And that when, when someone requested that I talk about storage, pests is what jumped into my mind. Now you might be lucky enough to live in an area where pests are not a substantial consideration, but I live in the South of the United States and pests are a major consideration. There are two primary culprits that will literally eat your stash. It is carpet beetles and seed moths. I don't like either of them. Now, I call them seed moths because I have always had pet birds and they come in the seed. So they call them seed moths. You, they are also called flower moths because they can come in flower. And we call them wool moths. These types of little creatures eat natural things. So they'll eat seed, they'll eat wool, they'll eat cotton, they eat natural fibers. And once you have them, they're very difficult to get rid of. They make these little tiny uh, cocoons around the molding and you can see them. Whenever I bring new flour or new bird seed into my house, it goes directly into the freezer for at least 24 hours and that will kill off any eggs that might be in there. Carpet beetles are these tiny little boogers. They live in your carpet mostly and they eat, again, natural fibers. They get in and they go munch, 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 and they will absolutely destroy your stuff. And if they get in, like if you keep your yarn in like a drawer and it gets into that drawer, then pretty much the stuff in there is toast. Um, what they do is they'll burrow into the skeins and eat and you'll be fine, but then you'll hit this, this part that shreds and you're like, Ooh, it looks like it's rotten, but it's not. What you have there is carpet beetles. Now, the way to deal with these pests is to keep your stuff in sealed containers, keep everything up off the floor. You'll see the stuff that I'm working on right now back here that are in yarn bags, in project bags, because you know I love project bags. I have them hanging up. That's actually a towel rack I got at Ikea. And I have them hanging. I always keep everything up off the floor because you don't want to tempt those little boogers. And I keep everything in these plastic totes. Uh, Ziploc bags can also be helpful, but you have to be careful with Ziploc bags because they can seal in moisture if you're, they're really sucked in there. So every once in a while you need to open them up. And, you know, as I said, you have to pet it and you have to make sure that it knows it's still loved and then you can seal it back up. Anytime I shop, um, like from D-Sash or if... I have a friend who gives me a skein of yarn that I don't know what the source was or anything like that. No commentary whatsoever on their ability to store things, but anything that any yarn from an unknown source that comes into my house goes directly into the freezer. I have a deep freeze and frequently there's a fairly substantial amount of yarn in it. If you watched my unboxing video with the cruel yarn, which is the wool yarn, it went into the freezer. And you know, it's not a commentary, it's just I've been burned before and I don't want it to happen again. So what you wanna do is take any suspect yarn, put it into your deep freeze, or your freezer if you just have a standard freezer, and you wanna leave it in there for at least 24 hours. What this is going to do is kill any existing bugs um, that are in the yarn. Then you pull it out and you let it come to room temperature for 24 hours. And then you put it back in the deep freeze for another 24 hours. What that warming period does is it allows any of the little eggs that were in there because carpet beetle eggs can withstand freezing. Seed moth eggs cannot, but carpet beetles can. And what happens is when they warm up, it, it triggers them to hatch. And then when you put them back in, it kills, the freezing kills the larva. So it's a freeze, warm, freeze process. And then you can take it out. And again, it might have gotten some um, 
condensation or, or dampness from your freezer. So you need to make sure that it's dry before you store it in a tub or whatever storage method you have. But I really wanted to talk about this in this storage video because you have to, there, the, the agony of getting into a drawer that has gotten munched on is just, it's, it's, it's just very, very sad. And I've been knitting with something and then you start hitting areas where the yarn starts shredding and you realize that you have a problem and you need to fix it. Another thing I would say, um, I am pretty sure that when I did have a problem and I haven't had a problem in a long time, but I'm very vigilant now, I had purchased a sweater at Goodwill to unwind and reclaim the yarn. And that is where I got carpet beetles. So if you do want to do reclaimed yarn like that by taking a sweater and unraveling it, make sure you take safety precautions and freeze that booger before you introduce it into the same space where your stash is. So this was my little conversation about stash storage. I recommend the plastic tubs and the plastic totes from the container store. I use them, they're stackable, they're clear, they're sturdy. I use them all the time. Uh, anytime you have things in fabric, like project bags that are you working on actively, make sure it's up off the floor and Freezer. Your freezer is your friend. Watch out for those little boogers. Um, is there anything else? What else is there to talk about about storage? <laughs> lavender, cedar, things like that. I would love to hear if you guys have any fun and interesting storage ideas, you can comment in the description below. If you like this video, please give it the thumbs up, click that like bit button. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload a new video, please subscribe to my channel and select notifications. Thank you so much.